me to Romans uh, chapter 8, verses 3 and 4 to open up, and then we'll go from there. This is basically a, a message about when God's love came to earth. And, uh, and other things. Chapter 8 of Romans, verses uh, 3 and 4, says, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. The righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the day and for the goodness of you. And uh, thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ as we acknowledge him this time, his birth, uh, next week. And uh, it's the day that we set aside for that. But we can do that every day and need to. We need to realize who we are are uh, dealing with and uh, what our obligations are. <clears throat> and Father, we praise you for that. We ask that you'd be with each one of us this week and keep us in your hands and those that are traveling, you'd watch over them and care for them. Let us be, those, let, let us be lights for you uh, out there in the world. And that we might uh, uh, do the things that uh, glorify you. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Most of my verse, uh, verses are at the end of this. Because I, I set it up with a, a message that sets up the verses. The world's view of Christmas... Uh, is that it is empty. And, and this is important because uh, I've noticed, uh, I don't know that you have or not, but I've noticed that uh, there's little emphasis on the spiritual part of Christmas anymore in the world. Uh, people say Merry Christmas, but, you know... Uh, they say those things for all sorts of reasons. But, you know, uh, we are liable to hear most anything this Christmas, about Christmas, and uh, made aware that the world believes that it is a woeful time at the very best. You know, a lot of people think about the worst things about Christmas, and um, they they expect, uh, I don't know what they expect anymore, but I know that there are times when people expect, uh, just because it's uh, Christmas, that everything is going to be rosy. And of course, that's not true. Life is not rosy, needless to say, and and uh, Christmas doesn't have any effect on that. And um, it is a woeful, in the eyes of the world, time uh, at the very best. What do I mean by when I say woeful? Well, what I mean when I say woeful, the world is full of woe or trouble. You know, there's a lot of things go on in the world that aren't... Uh, uh, God's things and and they don't uh, glorify God and and um, well there's not the joy of Jesus Christ in the world today let's face it there's the, there's the joy in Christianity uh, in, in our view of Christ but even we, as a, as a conglomerate of uh, Christians, uh, don't uh, see the joy in Jesus as much as we used to. 
And the joy for many, in fact, this morning uh, I, I read this, the joy for many is the 2018 film, The Grinch. And, you know, The Grinch does not uh, justify Jesus, let's face it. And uh, the attitude of people who go along with that and find that humorous, well, they, they've made it the number one film, the 2018 version of that, the number one film at Christmas now, or this year. That's box office figures. Every biblical reference for that word uh, woeful uh, every uh, biblical reference for that word is the New Testament in the New Testament is from the gr Greek word uae an, expl an exclamation such as uh, uh, alas <clears throat> only woe or uh, things like, uh, please, no more grief. You know, it uh, seems like we've had enough grief in life. But we've got to continue to love the Lord Jesus and have the joy of Christ. Maybe sorrow is all that remains. I don't believe it. I just believe we've let it slide and let it slip away. Why is this true? In the great, in the uh, uh, is this true in the uh, greatest Christian society ever known? America is that society. Christianity is all around the world. Uh, God said He'd send His word everywhere. He commissioned us to take the word everywhere, and uh, many of those places have been reached. Uh, but. Um, Yet even we are guilty of some of the ugliest of attitudes toward unbelieving people, uh, the things of God, uh, leading people to Jesus, and caring for people of the world. Now, uh, you, when you take uh, 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 the nation there in Ukraine, and how the Americans responded, uh, it was uh, a pretty good response, and, uh, and it, it was uh, heartfelt. But you know, the truth is, is that um, the dark side of America and the world didn't respond like the Christianity of America did. So we did see some things uh, in, uh, in favor of God when we responded uh, to their needs there. Um, and there will be more required of us, I'm sure. Then there are the uh, powers to be which have done all they can do to destroy our nation, the buying power of our nation, the uh, products that we can get, things that we can't find today, uh, and uh, not only in food and so forth, but in fuels and, and other things. Not to dwell on uh, one world government and collusion with Marxist world power. We're in bed with... Uh, if I might use that term, uh, with Russia, China, uh, Venezuela, and Cuba, just to name four of the most prominent and the, mo and, and the most wealthy of nations. And we're right there in the midst of that uh, with collusion and other things. So people have a grim view of what uh, the Christmas season is today. Where does a nation and world of absolute calamities go from here? Where do we go? In other words, what do we do? And we just studied that from 
uh, Dr. Jeremiah, but this is a little different emphasis. Where, do, where does a nation and world go that is suffering from the things that we're suffering from to be better? Do we go to our own power? Well, I don't think so because isn't that the problem right now? Isn't the problem with the world today the lack of God's power and the influence from our own power? The things we think need to be done, speaking of the world, is a general subject. I like to classify it like fools trying to overcome foolish decisions. We've made foolish decisions in America and in the world and uh, we are a nation and world of fools trying to use foolishness to change themselves. The rottenness of this uh, nation and world trying to do the same things over and over and expecting different results. We do that, and yet they have not considered the beauty of God. Well, let me put it this way. The beauty of God's love, which came down to mankind. You see, the problem is, is that we look at things from a worldview and not the beauty that uh, God has placed in the world when He sent His own Son to come here. The beauty of that is the beauty of life and it is in fact the life that we have uh, in everlasting. I hear people say uh, Merry Christmas but I hear no one say, God bless you this Christmas. I hear people say, Merry Christmas, but I don't hear anybody say, Merry Christmas in Christ. In other words, Christmas holds nothing for Christ in the world today. He's been virtually removed from Christmas because we... Uh, uh, don't acknowledge him and don't want him uh, in our society uh, teaching us the things that we need to know. Uh, Merry Christmas without the Mary and or the Christ. Now, the reason for that is the Marxist uh, societies created here want to marry, want a Mary donut hole. They want, they want uh, Heather brought us a baker's dozen donuts last night. We didn't need them. We didn't need one of them. Uh, but this morning I got up and there were several missing. You know? And we're, uh, we're always looking for, and Donna made mention, she said, well, you've had three of them. I said, well, you know, that, that's probably right. I probably have had three of them. But, you know, the world is looking for a uh, Merry Christmas donut hole, one that gives them the excitement and, uh, and, and uh, the joy and uh, blessing and etc. that comes without the whole donut. You know, just give me the donut hole and I'll be happy with that and I'll be joyful and I'll be blessed but the real blessing is not in the donut hole. The real blessing is in the whole donut. And uh, the real joy is in the whole donut. And I submit to you in the world today that that's Jesus. Jesus is everything. Amen. He's the whole of it all. All the things we do, all the things we say, all the, the uh, uh, things we go about, there's nothing if Christ is not in it. The love of Christ. Many of our society uh, don't want that sweet savor of his personage in Christmas. You know, when I think about Christmas, 
I think about the sweetness of the savor of uh, the thing that Christ did for us. You know, he went to the cross and he uh, gave everything he had. And uh, that was a sweet-smelling savor uh, to the Lord and should be to us because of what he did and what that uh, did for us. People like uh, uh, John Dewey, the so-called father of progressive education, in 1922 uh, started that educational system, which is a Marxist indoctrination in our present day schools, and its purpose was and is to turn society away from Jesus Christ. They've been successful. We can all uh, say that they have done that to our society, but we've all got to say now that we must stop that. And how are we going to do that? And how do we make the world see that it needs to turn? Um, it has succeeded in producing the society we see today. A world that wants God-like blessing without God. I want everything that God provides for uh, Christian people, but I don't want to be a Christian. I, I don't want to turn my life around. I, I don't want to be... Uh, uh, gracious to other people. I don't want to be um, loving, caring. I don't want what God has. I just want what God will give me. And that's the way the world sees uh, Christianity today. Um, and, and they think it can have it just because they want it. And even though powerless to produce it. Have you noticed people today? They want everything they want. And they feel like they ought to have it. God ought to provide it if they even believe in God. But they ought to have those things. Even though they don't earn them. They don't justify them. They don't uh, honor the things that God has done for us. And what He provides for us. What God, do, what God offers is His fullness of love through the one He sent down to mankind. That's what God gives. God gives us His love. We talked about His protection this morning in Sunday school. A part of His love is His protection. Oh, all of us are going to die someday. Or be raptured out. And, uh, and that's just the way it is. But in the meantime, uh, look what God does for us and help, how He helps us and uh, meets our needs. So I think what we need to say <clears throat> to politicians, to people in government, and to... Um, the people of the world is three things quickly. Let's get a better understanding of the world by looking at Matthew chapter 1 and verses 20 through 25. Uh, this is speaking of the angel's visit to Joseph. We see that in verse 19. Verse 20 says, But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, <clears throat> saying, Joseph, thou son of David, Fear not to take unto thee Mary. Now, didn't we just talk about uh, fear? Uh, how having confidence 
in Christ does away with fear. Uh, uh, where God's love is, there is no fear. He says, to fear not to take unto you uh, Mary your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall uh, save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. And then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and he took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Now, if only the world, if only Christianity that's gone uh, astray from God, and there's a lot of it, if only they would accept the agent of God's love that he gave to the earth. If only we would look on the things that are happening that are right and give God the glory and, uh, and, and be raised up. If they would, they would be satisfied. They would be merry. And they would sing songs and spiritual songs, as the Ephesians says. We'd be singing those things all the time. You would see it in people every day. Now, I have to say this, though. I have heard more people say Merry Christmas. We're beyond that thing that you can't say Christmas anymore. With most people, I'm, I'm, I'm praising God. And we need to continue that. But we need to make it more special, like Merry Christmas in Christ. Uh, we need to include Christ's name in Christmas. We may, to remove it, to set it aside, to so everybody understands what Christmas is about. If you ask a child today in, in any school, what's Christmas about? It's about family, not Christ. Family. It's about family and presents. And maybe doing some good deeds. Well, those are all fine. I, I love my family. And I love good deeds. But not above Christ. Christ is the one. That's who we're worshiping here. Now, uh, they would understand that. And uh, realize that Jesus is the Savior with us. That's what Jesus means. Savior of his people. And our Emmanuel, God with us, what the world is doing will not work again. The things that are going on in the world, they're not going to continue. They can't continue. It's an impossibility. Uh, everything will uh, collapse if we continue to follow the world's plan. It'll be over, and it won't be that much longer. Number two, look with me in Matthew 18. Just a second. Matthew chapter 18, verses uh, 23 through 33. Well... I will find it in a minute. Okay. Now, everybody got it? Alright. 
starting in verse uh, 23. It says, Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, <clears throat> which would take account uh, uh, of his servants. In other words, he would draw, bring all of his servants to his presence and, and have an account from them about how they're handling the responsibilities that he gave them. We're going we're gonna to do this. We're going to stand before Jesus at the uh, Bema seat, not the uh, great white. We're great white throne. We're, we're past that. We're saved. But this is a, uh, a judgment seat of the saved in the sense that he is going to make known publicly everything that we did, the good and the bad. Not for condemnation, but for rewards in heaven and because the truth has to be said in heaven. Now, uh, and when they had begun to reckon, explain their actions, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. Uh, in today's money, that's uh, uh, $52 million. For as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had, and payment be made. The servant therefore fell down <coughs> and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. And the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him, that's the action, compassion, is passion or love in action. And loosed him, let him go, and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants which owed him a hundred pence, uh, $44. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that you owe. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. And he would not, but he went and cast him in prison till he should pay his debt. I've always wondered how he expected him to pay his debt if he was in prison. Right? So when the, his fellow servants saw what he had done, they were very sorry and came and told unto the Lord all that, that was done. Then his Lord, after he had called him, gave him, uh, uh, said unto him, O wicked servant, I forgave you of all debt because you desired me to do it. Should you not have also had compassion on, the, on your friend, your fellow servant, even as I had pity on you? Shouldn't I treated you, treated the, that man or that woman the same as, uh, uh, or should you not have treated that person the same as I treated you? Should you not have had compassion on him? The world needs to recognize that the compassion of God was and is the love of Christ in his actions on the cross. The very love of God was demonstrated by allowing his own son to go to the cross. And yet we turn around and the world turns around and many a Christian turns around and treats 
people in a way that's not God's way. Many people are uh, discredited. Many people are forsaken in the world today and they needed that salvation and God gave them that salvation. And the world needs to say Merry Christmas in Christ and the love of God in Christ. Matthew 22, very quickly, 22, 37 through 39. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. You understand that what he is saying in the other verses is that what he expects of us is to, uh, is to understand that God is first and foremost and Jesus Christ. That is the first and great commandment. Love them first and great and, the, and of course the Spirit. And then in verse 30. Uh, 9 he says and the second is likened to it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself when we let the world get by and get away from uh, and uh, with doing the things they're doing we're not doing the things of Christ amen we're not because our responsibility is are these people to at least uh, give them the gospel track or anything. Do whatever we can do to meet that need. Our need, our uh, neighbors. And when you get when we get through and later on today, read Hebrews twelve two through four. You don't need to do it now because we need to move. The third and last thing is John 3.15 to 17. Well, everybody knows that. And um, so, John 3.15 through 17. It says, For whosoever believeth in in him, being Jesus, should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him or on, uh, in him or on him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That the love of God might be fulfilled in the salvation of the world. And so it is our responsibility to take that message right there and make it a part of our lives because, you know, God's love is the remedy for the world's woeful, sorrowful, grief-filled outlook in life and, and their manner of life. That's the problem. The lack of the love of God being spread in the world and holding people accountable to the Word of God. You know, you have to understand, and I do too, the only people, the only people who are accountable for the word are not just the Christians. Unbelievers are accountable for every word in this Bible. They will stand judgment at the great white throne why they uh, reneged upon their uh, uh, need to be accountable to the word of God. 
And Romans chapter 1 makes that very clear. It always has been. It is. Peace with God through Christ's salvation is the answer. Peace with God through Christ's salvation is the answer. When we trust in Christ, we are made at peace with God. We're able to come before the presence of God. We're no longer judged by God. Now, He will, he will say uh, what we did wrong after, after it's not the things before we were saved, the things after we were saved, how we treated the Word of God and how, how we did the things he gave us to, to do. And we'll be accountable for that. But it won't be a judgment to us. And um, when you go to uh, Hebrews, after a while, uh, chapter 12 also reads verses 14 and 15. Now, that's what's needed in the world, those three things right there. And we need to start talking that way. In other words, I hear things on news, and, and they're, they're right in what they say, but they don't say that it's our responsibility because of God, of God and Christ. They say, well, we need to go do this. Well... We've already gone and done that. It didn't work. It's not going to work. What you need to do is put God back in America. That's what we have to say to America and our politicians in America. You want the right kind of life here? Well, you've got to do something to have the right kind of life. <coughs> And that's what is required, I believe. You may see more that's required, or you may feel differently about it. That, that's up to you. But that's what I see. And I've got, I got to say that we've got to start talking about God more and more and more. Every time somebody says something to me, uh, well, just about every time, I say, well, God be praised. You know, or thank God. Let people know that things don't just happen because they want them to, that are good. God has to be in it for it to be right. So let's make a pledge to ourselves and to God to do those very things. Anybody have something you'd like to say? Let me pray. Father, thank you for the day and for your goodness. Thank you for the word and for its instruction in righteousness, in correction, in staying right. Help us to live by this word, not what people say, not what they think, not their observations about life. There's no observation about life, Lord, that doesn't come from your word. If we base our observations on life from anything but your word, Lord, bring it to our minds immediately. Watch what we watch, what watch. We listen to, watch over us. We need you to be working in us and using us as a testimony. And we'll thank you and praise you. We thank you for the 